hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us again on this video. My name is Lars Christian Haugen, and I'm joined by... Roshni Patel, over here. Hi. And um, this is the HP Value Investing Show number three. And uh, thank you for checking out the video. And uh, if you like it, we would appreciate if you would hit the like button and share it with your friends and also um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And um, also you could um, go to our um, website, which is hpvalueinvesting.com. And you can sign up for the newsletter and see other stuff we've written and reports we put on there. And you can also follow us on etoro.com, which is a social trading platform where you can copy what we do uh, in our portfolio. Uh, but anyway, in this video, we're going to talk about our newest investment, which is uh, Hargreaves Lansdowne. So, uh, Roshni, should we just uh, jump right into it? Yeah, let's crack on. As mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about Hargreaves Lansdowne today, or HL. We'll start off by talking a little bit about the company. HL is an online investment platform where retail investors can buy shares and funds. They also offer savings accounts, pension accounts, and other products. Their revenues come from a number of places, but are not limited to charging fees for buying shares, um, charging fees for where, if you want to invest in funds, um, and interest earned on clients' money. Now, before we jump into the main analysis, we wanted to quickly point out that the P-E ratio, price earnings, is almost at a historical low if you look towards Jan 21 there. Um, this is worth pointing out because it suggests that it might be a good time to invest in HL. And furthermore, we can see that the share price is almost back to where it was around three and a half years ago. So we can see that the share price is now hitting around um, 1500 in sterling. All right, shall we move on to business tenants then? Yeah, let's move on to... Um business tenants. Um, so uh, firstly, we just want to mention that the, the company has a consistent operating history, which uh, suggests that they have the potential to be consistent in the future as well. So we like to see a track record uh, of consistency because that suggests that they can keep doing that in the future. And then uh, we like investing in, uh, in stable, uh, consistent businesses because they're easier uh, to value. And what we can see here is a, an example of the consistency. So we have the net income here, which has been growing uh, consistently over the last 15 years. And then we also have the return on equity, which is the black line, which we can see it's very high, first of all. And secondly, it's, it's very consistent um, over the last year. So this is very good, uh, first off. And then also mentioning some... Um, other points, um, HL has a very strong uh, brand name and it is the, it's the market leader in the direct to consumer invest, investment platform market. And it has around 40% market share. And according mm -hmm. to a uh, platform, uh, which is the consultancy that advises uh, on this market, uh, the biggest players in the space are able to offer services that are what they call demonstrably stronger than the rest. So what this basically means is that scale matters. And AGEL is the largest player, followed by Interactive Investor and Fidelity Personal Investing. And uh, Platform says that um, in this market, scale is important because it enables companies to invest in its technology and customer service, customer service uh, which are two important aspects uh, to staying competitive. And even big banks uh, like Barclays are struggling to develop technology that can compete with uh, Hargreaves, Lansdowne, and the like, because they have a platform call, called Barclays Smart Investor. <clears throat> and uh, we therefore believe that AGEL is in a strong competitive position due to its brand name and its scale, uh, which positions it well for the long term. And now we're going to look um, at the, uh, some industry analysis and uh, the potential for future growth. And um, we believe that there's scope for HL to grow in the future. They, they currently have uh, 120 billion of assets under administration on their platform, but they estimate, but they estimate that there's an addressable market of 2.4 trillion and, and that number is growing. So that's a market that is 20 times their current assets under administration and it's also growing. So on the slide here, we can see that there is um, 1 trillion uh, is in private wealth, 
uh, the bulk of which is held through independent financial advisors. And HL believes that these clients don't receive ongoing support and that they want to change over to a platform where they can keep all their investments in one place, in a, in a trusted company that makes things easy. And that's what uh, Hargreaves Lansdowne uh, offers. And uh, HL has helped many clients to do this uh, consolidation process uh, before. And then the remaining 1.4 trillion uh, is held in cash. So there's 1 trillion and then another 1.4, which makes up the 2.4 trillion. And so that's in cash. And, you know, that's despite the low interest rate environment. So this cash might uh, start getting invested in shares and funds since the holders aren't getting aren't getting any returns um, on their cash these days. But even if it's held in cash, uh, AGL provides a service uh, for managing cash. So they give their clients access to 12 different banks that they can put their money in. And you all you do it all through the, the Hargreaves Lansdowne uh, platform, which is a, it's a pretty decent service. So it, it, it allows people to get a higher um, interest rate on their, uh, their cash and they can switch between banks. And we can also see here that the, uh, uh, the amount of um, clients have been growing steadily over the last few years and also the growth in their assets under administration and uh, also their market share. Uh, so these are very good, um, good developments that we've seen over the last uh, four, five years. And moving on to some other points. Um, there's uh, in the UK, there is a savings gap uh, and there's a, a gap between retirement expectations and the cost of funding those expectations. And that, that gap is estimated to be 314 billion pounds. And the level of funding necessary to provide uh, retirement income is, increase, is increasing. And that's driven by longer life expectancies um, and less generous uh, company pensions and also, lastly, people's ambitious retirement expectations. You know, people, they, um, they want um, a better retirement these days. And the burden of responsibility for retirement is shifting from the government and the companies to the individual. And this gap can't be closed without individual, individuals taking ownership for self-provision and without the use of long-term, um, uh, with, sorry, without the uh, use of long-term investments alongside the cash savings. So this is obviously an opportunity for AHL. And there's also the demographics are changing a bit. There is a growing younger demographic. So from our personal observation, we can see that the industri industry is growing, especially uh, with younger retail investors. You know, we have friends who are coming to us who weren't interested in investments before, but now they're talking to us uh, about investing in, in shares and yeah. funds. So we can see that that's happening and it's becoming easier to participate because of all these platforms uh, like Hargreaves Lansdowne. And uh, in these uncertain pandemic times, you know, and, and the low interest rate environment, more young people are realizing that they need to take charge um, of their own finances. And um, this, uh, this demographic shift is significant because first of all, Hargreaves Lansdowne is getting more, uh, more customers, but also they're getting young customers who can be customers potentially for the next 30 to 40 years. So they can uh, provide the company with the recurring revenues, which is obviously very positive. Right, let's move on to the management analysis. So in short, Hargreaves Lansdowne is open about what the CEO and the CFO are paid, which shows that the company is candid. And we like that. This is a good sign. We want a company to be candid with its shareholders because it means that we can trust them. Another point worth mentioning is the Neil Woodford incident. Neil Woodford is a well-known investor in the UK and used to be highly respected. He had a successful career, but in 2019, his fund was closed. Basically, in the run-up to that year, he... He was making some unusual investments in small and illiquid stocks, which led to poor performance. And ultimately, investors started asking for their money back. And as a result, the fund eventually got closed down. A lot of retail investors lost money in that fund. Um, but how is HL connected? In short, HL had recommended the Woodford Fund on their list of top 50 funds. Woodford had underperformed for around two to three years 
but they thought that he would bounce back as he had done before. They are somewhat responsible because they could have done a bit more better due diligence on the fund. However, few people could have predicted that the UK's most famous fund manager would have had his fund closed like that. In spite of that, in the 2019 annual report, I think if you look at page 18, the CEO did apologise for this Woodford incident. And that's where he mentioned that both he and the CFO wouldn't take a bonus that year. They also waived um, the platform management fee on any direct holdings in the Woodford Fund. And we think that these actions demonstrate that the management has some sort of integrity. And the last point in our management analysis is that HL removed their platform exit fees. So in short, this is when people have to pay to leave the platform back in September 2019. And this seems to be something that not a lot, this seems to be something that not a lot of other platforms are doing. It suggests that HL are somewhat trailblazers, if you like, and that they're working to make the market a bit more fairer for its clients. And that's something that we like. Yeah, and I think just the last thing to mention is that um, this is just kind of a few things that we pointed out uh, that we wanted to pull out and uh, and show you to to give you sort of a, a feeling of what the management is like. There are obviously way more points that we can mention, but we felt that these are three good examples to showcase that uh, we believe that AGL has a good management. Now, moving on to the financial tenets, we'll begin with the return on equity. So as you can see in this blue line chart here, the return on equity has been consistently high for over the last 10 years at around 60% and been high in general across all time. Now, for us, we think this is an excellent return on equity history because it's on average much higher than most businesses. I mean, you can see it's just, it's, around 60% if not higher across most years, which is great. Now, moving on to the free cash flow, we can see that the company is generating increasing amounts of free cash flow across the years. So free cash flow is in short, the blue line, min sorry, the blue bar minus the black bar. The capex is negligible compared to the cash flow from operations. And this is great because it means that the capex will not eat into the free cash flow as the operations grow year on year. And our thoughts on this is, this is fantastic. We like companies that are going to be generating cash. And HL has been consistently doing just that, as you can see with um, the bar, with the cash from operations bar growing and growing. And then finally, we're going to look at the profit margins. Um, in short, we can see here that HL has pretty strong, if not excellent margins. Um, you can see the gross margin represented by the blue line over there. Um, at least over the last five years, is pretty steady above, around about 80% plus. And then in a similar vein, operating and net income margins are not too far off. You're looking at around about 70, 60% respectively. But the point is they're consistent, they're high, and they're the sorts of, well, to us at least, and they're the sorts of margins that we like to see. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the valuation. I mean, for this one, we... Um did what we usually do, which is a discounted cash flow analysis. So just to explain it very simply without going into too much detail, we use a 10% 10 10 growth rate uh, for, uh, we did it for the next 10 years. And then we also did it for the next 20 years. So we did uh, two different scenarios, but we used a 2% terminal growth rate in both of those, and then a 10% discount rate. And basically what we came to was that the intrinsic value estimate of, uh, of the share um, is about 13 pounds to 18 pounds. And uh, we, we bought shares at around 15 pounds because we, we saw that um, um, you know, the 15 pound uh, number is basically in the middle of that um, fair value estimate. And we think that Hargreaves Lansdowne is such a good business um, and that our uh, downside is is covered. So we felt that this was a, a good time uh, to buy the shares. And also going back to the um, one of the first slides when we talked about the, the price to earnings ratio, we can see that that's uh, almost at an historical low. So we thought that would be a uh, good time to invest. And just one more thing I wanted to add here is, you know, when you see a business that's good and that's strong, we, we like to think we're not all talk. So if we see a good business, we're going to invest. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. All right. And then um, coming towards the end now, I just wanted to mention a few risks because uh, there are obviously um, 
always risks with investing in companies and um, uh, you know, Hargreaves, Lansdowne uh, have their risks and there, there's always uh, the potential for something bad happening. And the first one is the competition. It's a, it's a very competitive market and, and there's a low barrier to entry. There is a lot of uh, companies um, offering uh, investment platforms. However, even though there's a low barrier to entry, we would say that there is a, a high barrier to success because as we mentioned earlier, scale matters because if you have scale, you can invest in your technology and in your customer uh, service. So although there is competition and low barriers to entry, um, Hargreaves Lansdowne is the biggest player and they're kind of protected by being that. But still, it, it's something that we, we need to take into, the, into account. And then and another thing is if there's a stock market crash. Now, obviously, there's always a risk uh, of a stock market crash, no matter what stocks you're investing in. However, the point about Hargreaves Lansdowne is that when the stock market is doing well, people want to invest. And if the stock market does poorly, people do not want to invest. So if we have a kind of very violent bear market, um, let's say in one of the coming years, then people could maybe lose interest in stocks. Like that's what happened after 1929. Like I think for the the next decade to come or two decades, people didn't want to invest in, in stocks because they'd been so burnt uh, by the 1929 situation. Um, and this could potentially happen again. I mean, you never know. We're not predicting a 1929 crash. But if there's something more serious coming, then that could have um, effect in uh, in many years to come. And then just the, just the third thing we want to mention is that, uh, you know, we used a 10% growth rate over uh, the next 10 to 20 years. Now, that's pretty high um, um, for, um, you know, for normal companies. But, you know, Hargreaves Lansdowne isn't a normal company. It's, it's, a, it's a high quality company. Uh, on average, uh, the, the growth in free cash flow has been 15% a year over the last 10 years. And we used um, only... 10%. But again, I mean, once you start um, estimating 10, 20 years out, it can uh, it can get difficult. So there might be a chance that we've overestimated, in which case we would have bought the shares at um, too high a price. But, you know, we will, um, we will keep an eye on that uh, in the years going forward. And now just uh, coming to the conclusion, um, we believe that Hargreaves Lansdowne is a quality company trading at a reasonable price. They have several, com uh, several competitive advantages, uh, you know, one being the brand name and, and the size of the company. And they have excellent financials and they're a market leader in a growing industry. And um, as we mentioned, we believe the fair value is about uh, between 13 to 18 pounds per share. And we bought shares at around 15 pounds and we plan to hold those for the long term. So um, yeah, that's kind of basically it. Uh, Rosh, do you have any anything else to add or anything uh, you want to get off your chest? I know. Um, I think you've uh, covered everything that needed to be covered there. Um, as usual, we appreciate your views on our analysis. Um, and if you have any questions as well, we'd, we'd uh, love to know. Um, and I suppose as mentioned at the beginning, if you if you like what you see, please um, like and subscribe. And um, if you're interested in investing and following following our investment or copying our portfolios, uh, feel free to go to etoro.com. And one more time, our website is hpvalueinvesting.com, where you can see all of our reports, blogs, um, past videos. And if you want to get in touch, you can contact us via that website. Yeah. Noise. That that's it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much. Bye.